If you're a person that likes time lapses, then have I got a video for you. So this summer, my dad and I decided to remove everything off of this wall because I had this dream of wall-to-wall -wall pegboard. If I had my way, the world would be covered in it. And anyway, so we took all of this down and he used a bunch of um, concrete kind of uh, screws. We had to get a special drill bit for the drill in order for us to hang up the pegboard. He hung about three of these sheets of pegboard and then my custodial friend, Mr. Joe, hung the rest. And then then it was just kind of blank. So I decided to take my handy dandy bingo dauber and go to town Charlie Brown. So don't be fooled. All of my designs on this wall were drawn initially with chalk. It's my preferred way to draw basically on anything. When I create designs on fabric before needle felting, I use chalk. When I decide to draw a mural, I go ahead and use chalk. In fact, that's what you see me using right here. It's great because you really can't see me using it. And the other great thing is, is that once I'm done kind of going over my lines with chalk, which you can easily brush off with like a sponge or a towel in case you make a mistake, you can't even really see the chalk. Once it's dry, I might wipe it off, but so far I haven't and it doesn't really bother me that much. Now, when you are drawing with an ink-filled bingo dauber, let's talk about that for a second. I purchased my bingo daubers online empty. You can find them on a lot of different websites. And then what I do is I fill them with India ink, which is like a carbon black ink. It's permanent. And I do sometimes dilute it with a little splash of water because sometimes it can be a little bit thick. Plus it's not cheap. So I try to extend it as much as I can. My students and I use bingo daubers all the time. In fact, in my room, I call them paint markers because we treat them just like a marker. And that's what I'm using right here. I did notice that sometimes it would drip a little bit. You might see it later on. There's going to be some drips in my design. I am not fixing it. I'm just going for it. Now, when I was going over my lines on the concrete wall, it did add a bit of a texture and there's a lot of gaps in my drawing. You'll see where I kind of hit like a speed bump, shall we say, when it was going over the grout between the um, bricks. I'm leaving it. I'm not going back. I'm not filling anything in. I'm embracing all of the mistakes. Same with the pegboard with the drips and the little bumps from the holes, just going with it. Because once things are hung on the pegboard, you know, it's the little things that kind of make your eye twitch at first and then after a while you don't even notice. At least I don't. So now here I am just filling this in and you can kind of tell by my outfits the seasonal changes that were happening as I'm working on it. I only worked on this see, Christmas, when I had a little bit of time to go back in and do it. I'm not a great person about starting something and finishing something all in one setting. See, there goes the drips because I get a little bit distracted, as you can tell, just by me hollering out about drips. Once this was finished, I have had in my possession a neon sign that I had made found a place online. I've had it since the beginning of the school year. It's just kind of been sitting in the back of my room. So I wasn't going to hang it until all of the painting was finished. Decided I need a little bit more at the top and now it's complete. Not exactly sure how I'm going to utilize the pegboard, but I will keep you posted. Thanks guys.